Hello, everyone, and welcome to a presentation about Colorado's perspectives on health, quality of life, and midterm elections in 2018. This is a presentation of a joint project between the Kaiser Family Foundation and the Colorado Health Foundation. My name is Kyle Legwagner. I am the Senior Director of Policy and Advocacy at the Colorado Health Foundation. And for this presentation, I'm joined by Ashley Kurtzinger, a Senior Survey Analyst at the Kaiser Family Foundation. For those of you who might not already be familiar with the Colorado Health Foundation, we wanted to start with just a little bit about who we are as an organization. Uh, we have a vision for the state of Colorado, and that is that across Colorado, we can each say that we have all that we need to live healthy lives. That is our vision for the state of Colorado because we believe that health is a basic human right. For those of us who get to work at the Colorado Health Foundation every day, that means that our mission is to improve the health of Coloradans, and it also means that we understand that we can't do that work alone and that we need other partners to join us in this effort. And that's why we also have a rally cry of bringing health and reach for all Coloradans. At the Colorado Health Foundation, we have these things that we call cornerstones. that are key underpinnings of all the work that we do. And those are that we exist to serve Coloradans who are low income or historically have had less power and privilege. Everything that we do is with the intent of creating health equity and making sure that everybody in Colorado has what they need to live a healthy life. And we are also committed that everything that we do is informed by the community and those that we exist to serve. And that's a key reason why we engaged on this project with the Kaiser Family Foundation as a way of listening to Coloradans about what they're thinking about as they head into the 2018 midterm elections to um, hear from Coloradans about what's important to them in the state of Colorado. And with that, I'll turn it over to Ashley, who will walk us through what we learned through this project. Thank you, Kyle. As he mentioned, my name is Ashley Kurtzinger. I'm a senior survey analyst at the Kaiser Family Foundation, and we were glad to partner with the Colorado Health Foundation on this project. A little bit about the poll methodology. The survey was of 1,800 Colorado adult residents conducted over the telephone during August 15th to September 19th of this year. The interviews were conducted in English and Spanish, and the data was weighted to match 2016 Colorado state-based estimates from the U.S. Census Bureau's American Community Survey. The margin of error, including the adjustments we made to weighting, for the full sample is plus or minus three percentage points. However, for smaller subgroups, the margin of sampling error may be larger. KFF is a proud member of A4 Transparency Initiative, so all of the information about the methodology for this survey is available in the report. Our key findings for this project. The survey indicates that Coloradans generally have a positive outlook for the future of both the state and their local communities and think that the economy in the state overall is improving. However, there are several issues that focus around costs that are important to Coloradans. This includes housing and health care affordability. These issues are on the forefront of the minds of Colorado residents, both generally about their own lives, what they want the state government to work on, as well as the minds of voters leading into the 2018 midterm elections. In more depth than that, nearly three in 10 Colorado residents are worried that they might lose their home because they cannot afford their monthly housing costs. Similar to KFF national polling data that we've collected over the past year, health care, and specifically the affordability of health care, is among the top issues for Colorado residents. Half of Coloradoans say that it is harder for people like them to afford health care. Throughout the survey, we find that there are still signs of inequality with individuals from certain demographic groups, including those earning less than $40,000 a year or of, from racial minorities, reporting a poor health status and a lower quality of life in the state. Moving on to our first finding. One element of the survey was to ask 
the residents whether they thought these list of issues in Colorado were getting better or worse. As you can see, a majority of Colorado residents said that the economy and jobs in the state are getting better compared to one in five who said that things were getting worse in this area. However, when we juxtapose that against some key issues such as healthcare costs, substance abuse, and housing costs, we find that a majority of Colorado residents said things in this area are getting worse including 8 in 10 who said housing costs are getting worse. We also asked Colorado residents how they thought things were generally going in the country, in the state, and in their local communities. As you can see, a majority of the residents said that things in their state and in their local communities were headed in the right direction while the majority say that things in the country are, are pretty seriously off on the wrong track. It is important to remember when we're looking at these results that a lot of this is being driven by party identification, with the majority of Democrats saying things in Colorado are headed in the right direction, and a majority of Republicans saying things in the country are headed in the right direction. However, both Republicans and Democrats can agree that things in their local community are headed in the right direction. We asked residents to gauge the quality of life in their state. This was a five-point scale, and what we're presenting here are the top two responses. So those that said that things generally are, or their quality of life in Colorado was either excellent or very good. Six in 10 residents said that things in Colorado are generally excellent or very good. However, there are significant differences by demographic groups. As you can see, fewer black and Hispanic residents compared to white residents rate their quality of life in Colorado as excellent or very good. In addition, those earning less than $40,000 a year are less, like, less likely than their counterparts to report their quality of life in Colorado as either excellent or very good. One place where we found similarities across demographic groups is residents living in the Denver Boulder areas compared to the suburbs, front range, or rural areas. As you can see, a majority of residents, regardless of where they're living, rate the quality of life in Colorado as either excellent or good. The very first question in the survey was an open-ended question asking residents to tell us what they think is the most important issue facing people in Colorado. These responses were then tabulated and put into categories. As you can see, 15% of Colorado residents said the most important issue facing people in the state is housing affordability. This is followed closely by the economy and jobs, health care, environmental concerns, immigration and population growth, issues such as marijuana or drugs, or education. Only the top six, top six responses are shown here, and respondents gave us a whole list of issues that they think is the most important issue facing people in Colorado. Yet those concerns about housing affordability and affording health care come up repeatedly throughout the project. When we ask people whether it has become easier or harder for people like them to afford their rent or mortgage, 52% says it's become harder over the past few years. In addition, half also says it's gotten harder for people like them to have a secure retirement or afford health care. Fewer said it's gotten harder for people like them to get a good education, afford food, or find good jobs. However, it's important to point out that for none of these items did a majority of residents say it's gotten easier for people like them to do any of these things. So going into more depth on one of these key issues, housing affordability, we find
find three in ten Colorado residents saying that they are worried, either very or somewhat, that they might lose their home because they cannot afford their monthly rent or mortgage. This includes one in ten who said that they are very worried that they would lose their home over the next year. About half of Colorado residents said they're not at all worried about this. Denver and Boulder residents were more likely to report increased problems affording housing. 65% of Denver or Boulder residents said it was harder for people like them to afford their rent or mortgage. And 35% said they were worried that they might lose their home because they cannot afford their monthly rent or mortgage. However, this issue isn't just a problem in the Denver Boulder area. As you can see, 57% of those living in the suburbs said it had been harder for people like them to afford their rent or mortgage, compared to 46% of residents in the Front Range area and 42% of residents in rural areas. In addition, about one-fourth of those living in the suburbs, Front Range, or rural areas said that they are worried that they might lose their home because they cannot afford their monthly rent or mortgage. We also asked the respondents about a series of different issues that they would maybe like to see the Colorado state government work on. I'm pulling out just one finding from this, but I'll talk about the whole list of issues in just a minute. This is the share who says that it is either the most important or very important, but not the most important issue for that programs to make housing more affordable. As you can see, seven in 10 Colorado residents said that this is either the most important issue or very important issue. The concerns for this go beyond those that are perhaps housing insecure. While that issue is definitely more pertinent to that population with 88% of those individuals saying it's an important issue for the Colorado state government to work on, a majority of those that who are housing secure, meaning that they are not worried about losing their home, also say that this is an important issue for the Colorado state government to work on. Moving on to healthcare affordability, as promised, here's that list of issues that we asked respondents whether they think it's important or not for the Colorado state government to work on. I talked already about the second item on that list, programs to make housing more affordable, but you can see the whole list of issues, a majority of respondents said that this is an important issue for the Colorado state government to work on. Topping that list is lowering the amount individuals pay for health care followed by that programs to make housing more affordable, funding mental health programs, funding programs to help people who are experiencing hunger, funding substance abuse treatment or prevention programs, and slightly fewer say the same about funding programs to help children be physically active or passing a universal health insurance plan. While partisans may rank these issues somewhat differently, you can see the top issue, regardless of party ID, is lowering the amount individuals pay for health care, with one-third of Democrats saying that this is the most important health issue for the Colorado state government to work on, compared to one-fourth of independents and about one in five Republicans. For Democrats, Another important issue is passing a universal health insurance plan, with three in 10 Democrats saying that this is the most important health issue for the state government to work on. Independents and Republicans rank making housing more affordable higher. One of the great aspects of this project is we we're able to do a deep dive into different subgroups. And so we asked individuals about both their overall health status and their mental health status. While half of Colorado residents said it's become harder for people like them to afford health care, you can see that there are differences based on overall health and mental health. With those that are reporting only fair or poor health, a larger share of those 
saying that it's gotten harder for people like them to afford health care during the past few years. However, it is important to note that still nearly half of those who are in excellent, very good, or good health report that it's become harder for people like them to afford health care. And that is consistent for both general health status and mental health status. Thinking about the current Colorado healthcare system overall, we asked respondents whether they thought that the, the system was meeting the needs of both them and their family members, or most Coloradans. As you can see, a majority say that the current Colorado healthcare system is meeting the needs of them and their family. However, fewer say that the current Colorado healthcare system is meeting the needs of most Coloradans, including 35% who somewhat agree and 1 in 10 who strongly agree. Going deeper into some health questions, you can see that most Coloradans say people in the state are not able to get their needed mental health services. I'm going to walk you through this question because it's a little complicated. First, we asked whether they think most people in Colorado who need mental health services are able to get them or not. If they said that they're not able to get them, we asked them if this is a major problem, a minor problem, or not a problem. Half overall say that most, Colo most people in Colorado who need mental health services are not able to get them and that this is a major problem. An additional 10% said that this is a minor problem while few saying that this is not a problem at all. Similarly, we asked the question about substance abuse services. One third say that it's a major problem that those, and people in Colorado who need these services are not able to get them. An additional 10% said that it is a problem, but not a major problem. Towards the end of the survey, we were able to develop a rapport with our respondents, and so then we were able to ask some behavioral health questions. We asked, was there ever a time when you or another family member in your household thought you might need mental health or substance abuse services, but did not get them? One in five Coloradans said that, yes, this did apply to them. When we asked the reasons why they did not get these needed health services, 13% said it's because they couldn't afford the cost. 11% said it was because they didn't believe insurance would cover it. And about 1 in 10 said either that they were afraid or embarrassed or they didn't know where to go. That leads us up to the 2018 midterm elections. We asked what issues Colorado voters want to hear gubernatorial candidates talk about during their campaigns. As you can see, we have that 50% line in the middle, and most issues rank either the most important issue or very important for governor candidates to talk about in the upcoming election, with education, health care, and housing costs topping the list. We were able to compare these results with our national tracking polls that we've been conducting at Kaiser Family Foundation. And we found that once again, healthcare is among the top issues that they want to hear candidates talk about during the campaigns. Going back to the Colorado survey, these issues do vary slightly by party identification. The red boxes here have highlighted the top issues for Democrats, Independents, and Republicans. As you can see, for Democrats, education, health care, and housing costs are the most important issues. These issues are the same for independent voters. However, for Republican voters, the top issues are immigration, the economy and jobs, and housing costs. So while housing costs is important. It's the only issue that ranks among the top three for Democrat voters, independent voters, 
and Republican voters. Another aspect of this survey is when we ask people when they want to hear candidates talk about health care, what specifically do they mean? Four in ten said that they mean health care costs, with significantly fewer saying increasing access or decreasing the number of uninsured, universal coverage, or concerns about quality of coverage. This is very consistent with what we've seen in our national surveys. When we follow up with people, when we ask them about what they want to hear candidates talk about in terms of health care, the most likely response we get is are related to cost. This is consistent across party ID as well, with health care costs topping the issues for both Democrats, Republicans, and Independents. voters how enthusiastic they were about voting in this year's upcoming elections, both in terms of the congressional elections and the gubernatorial election. As you can see, 35% of voters said that they are more enthusiastic about voting in this year's congressional election compared to previous ones, while 28% said the same thing about the gubernatorial election. of Democratic voters said that they're more enthusiastic about voting in this year's congressional elections compared to 29% of Republicans and 31% of independent voters. 36% of Democratic voters said that they're more enthusiastic about, about voting in this year's gubernatorial election compared to 31% of Republicans and 21% of independents. So Democratic voters have an enthusiasm edge when it comes to the congressional elections, but maybe not so much in terms of the gubernatorial election. However, we know that health care, as well as other issues, aren't going to be the only factors in voters' decisions this fall. So we like to ask voters what will make the biggest difference in how they vote for Congress. Is it going to be a candidate support for or opposition to the president? The candidate's specific characteristics, such as their character and experience, local state issues, or specific national issues. As you can see, specific national issues ranks the lowest among total voters in what will make the biggest difference and how they vote for Congress. Democratic voters and Republican voters are more likely to say that a candidate's support for or opposition to President Trump will make the biggest difference in how they vote, compared to 21% of independent voters. Independent voters are more likely to say local or state issues will make the biggest difference in how they vote. That's just a little tidbit of all of the really interesting survey findings that we conducted. And we would like to encourage you to go to each of these websites to find out more information as well as you can download copies of the report and the top line methodology. Yes, and on behalf of the Colorado Health Foundation, we'd like to thank Ashley and our partners at the Kaiser Family Foundation for giving us the gift of this wealth of information about what Coloradans are thinking about in 2018. This only scratches the surface of what you can find on the Kaiser Family Foundation website about what people across the country are thinking about. So we encourage you to look at the resources available there because they truly do feel that need for trusted information about national health issues. And we've been proud to partner with them on this project. Um, we encourage you to be in touch with us uh, if you have any questions for us about uh, this survey, this, uh, this research project, um, and thank you for listening to this webinar today. You can find the full report on our website, as well as what Ashley referred to as the top line findings, which include the questions for everything that we asked on this poll and the raw data of what people responded to for each of those questions. So again, thank you for joining us for this webinar. We appreciate your interest.